fantastic foreskin. <laughs> That's definitely it. That was good. So, Paul, uh, we got a little uh, fantastic uh, foreskin uh, music there, Paul. Okay. I sprained my neck. Welcome, look, true believers. I look like a DJ. Yeah, a, a, a DJ in Gotham. Um, because they be getting fucked up in nightclubs all the time. Yeah. Watching that iceberg line. I, I just want to rant for two seconds. I went to that one restaurant in the uh, UK, Batman restaurant. I don't know if you saw my Instagram. I saw stories. your Instagrams. Yeah. Waste of time. <laughs> like it was like. If you're an adult, I guess you're gonna have a good time. Uh -huh. But like, I was, it was like a ten course Michelin uh, star meal, and like, I would have been happy with, with with chicken tenders and fries because I'm twelve. And they like the first meal was ox tongue and something else, and I immediately went, "Oh God, I hate this." I and, and I, we're in the bathroom because there's an intermission, and there were some guys in the bathroom who were like. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be as good. I honestly thought it'd be a guy in a Batman costume. And I was like, that's what I thought I was paying $200 yeah. for. For Batman I'm to come sure. and you, li you live in Manhattan. You can get a nice meal anytime. When are you going to get Batman serving you food? Times Square, anytime. Most of the time. Yeah. You give True. Me $10, you're right, you're right, you're right. right. You're right. You know what's going on. Yo. Yo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was my, that was, that's why, th that's the success of this podcast is we're not giving them a 10 course meal under the guise of a little bit of comic. We're giving them all comic. Mm -hmm. Loud and wrong at times. Passion. And, 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 the, and power. 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 <laughs> anything else. I need the power. Is that I a need new record? one an episode. Like, uh, like, for, like 40 seconds I don't in. even think we're, f yeah, a minute <laughs> in and you hit it with power. Power. Every time I see Christopher walking anywhere, he's all over the place because of Dune right now and I just, I can't, I do your impression of him. I, I couldn't can't sit through like his part of Dune, and I love the new Dune. But when she he, saw it, I didn't. When yeah. he came on, and he's like, I don't know where Paul Estrades is, but if he's alive, it's a threat. And I was, <laughs> I just like turned to my buddy. I was like, that's crazy, <laughs> dude. Everyone in the theater, like every time he came on screen, everyone just started like giggling. Oh, it was it was too much. Uh, it's Christopher Walken. Oh, yeah. It's not the Emperor. Like I was just like, that's all I saw. I want yeah. What were you saying? I was just saying it was so good, but it, it, was, it takes you out of it. Yeah. I, I was yeah. watching him on the red carpet. It was the 27th anniversary of Biggie's death, like a couple of weeks ago. And they asked him about it. And he goes, you know, I actually met him once. I was walking down the street. Car pulls over and he says, get in the car. So I did. And that made me think like immediately, <laughs> like I could do that to Christopher Walken and I'll have a Christopher Walken in my car. Oh, it'd be amazing. I've already got Christopher, away. Christopher's always walking. Christopher's always walking. <laughs> Christopher needs a ride. ride. Christopher leg tired. Think Christopher talking third person when he's a pedestrian. <laughs> there's a there's the famous Kevin Pollock bit where he like started his car like while while Christopher Walken was in front of it and Walken goes, Wow, your car's alive. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're talking about Marvel's first family. Fantastic Often four. overlooked the Fantastic Four, the FF. You know what I was thinking about today What's reading that? this? Because I read, uh, I went from issue one with Kirby and Stanley mm -hmm. all the way back to, uh, or all the way to like maybe th whatever one T'Challa was introduced to, or where they okay, met him yeah. when they met when they met uh, Black Panther. Was he introduced in Fantastic Four? It, uh, the, well, they were where they met. Where okay, they were introduced right. to him. I'm not. I don't think that they met there. I wrote it down. It was Fantastic Four fifty two. Um, so was Claw I'm, the villain in that? Yes. Okay. And uh, the one before that was 48, which had a pretty good Galactus uh, oh, yeah. story. And then uh, 5 with Doom. That was the first Doom appearance. Right. It was so great. Man, uh, it was 4, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that you always, like, ask, but you definitely know. Brent. I do. <laughs> it's I'm great. Just I'm just no. white. <laughs> yeah, he's like that? my dad. And um, what do we say? <laughs> uh, see, uh, now this is just my FF list that Mole I read. Mole Man was into. one. Mole Man was one. Yeah. Um, and he's always one. Even when they did the Ultimate reboot, he was one. He was one, too. He was one in that one. Uh, and then the other ones I read, Secret Wars 2015, Ultimate Vasion run that's out right now is really good it takes place after secret wars where the maker is like caught in a prison gotcha. and then he he's trying to free all the ultimates that we killed in the incursion when we plucked miles morales out from the other secret we, wars is complicated see, actually don't know that, i don't know that, that storyline yeah oh, it's, it, it's it's yeah. really interesting really um and then uh, the current fantastic four run that's out right now you and i've talked about this before it's so good like i love dan slot mm -hmm. for whatever reason it was a controversial run i thought he did a great job with the reckoning war I'm a softie for his Spider-Man stuff. But then for whatever reason, after that, they, they decided hard reboot. And it kind of works. Mm -hmm. 
in in the way that Marvel would definitely work if they adapted what because the, like they're not doing origins, they're not doing like the big cataclysmic event is uh, all these guys attacked from the negative zone and Reed's only solution was to send everybody in Manhattan in a certain rock uh, radius to Mars for a year and they would come back. Oh, interesting. But so they broke up after that because like their kids got sent away, Ben and Alicia's kids, and and it turned like there was a beautiful moment where Ben was like, uh, he's not a villain. He, he hates himself for what he did. This guy is a hero. And I'm like, that is, that's first family shit right there, man. Right. And that is classic Jack Kirby. People can say he just drew the characters. No, you have to have heart. Oh yeah, to put what he did into it, and even his life models, like the stuff he took from uh, from Playboy, and then gave it to Sue Storm, arguably the f- most powerful uh, of the Fantastic Four, right. I would say. Uh, and and then it gave, I hate to say this, but like hot blondes were able to see themselves as vixens. <laughs> goddamn, I mean, I can't think of another hero that wasn't just drawn by a man's anatomically fucked, warped perception. Yeah. Like Sue, fully clothed, had two kids, and. Always save the team. Put uh-huh. him in a field. She fucked Namor for a little bit. She didn't save the team doing that. But that's just, fellas, if you're listening to this, don't do, don't pull a Reed Richards. You're gonna hear a cautionary tale of how not to treat your lady. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I think I think you're on the money there. I truly think no one has had a bigger influence on comic books than Jack Kirby. Yeah, and that includes that includes Stanley. None of this, none of this happens without Jack Kirby. I think with, Stanley was great. He came up with so many of these ideas, but Kirby brought them to life. I was just realizing this reading Mr. Miracle, which is something uh, that many of our true believers We're have getting to it, man! <laughs> recommended to us. It's fantastic, and it's I'm like, it. holy shit, the new gods, Apocalypse? This was, was all Kirby. Kirby. Yeah, he did Dark Side. No, and he did Dark Side. Yeah, did like, he do the sun too, Orion? He did Orion, yeah. he did Mr. Miracle, did Big Orion's Varda. <laughs> oh, Mr. Miracle's a new god? Mr. Miracle's a new god, and that's these are all Kirby, and these are like, Kirby's like, this is, these are afterthought Kirby creations. I feel like so many of his creations were afterthought creations because he was a product of the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. And once he got a job, it was like, hold on to this job. To the point where he wouldn't fire other anchors who were ruining his art because he didn't want to be responsible for them losing work. Right. The dude had a heart. And and and, and not saying Stanley didn't, but he had to sort of take on the role of mascot for mm-hmm. the company. Uh, and, and Kirby doesn't, you don't really see his influence as much any more in modern stuff today because he's the blueprint. That's yeah. like the first guy to do it and we're just all doing it. It's, it's like making 50 copies of the same thing. The 50th one's not going to be the original but like it's 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 there. It's in the ink and it's uh, his touch and it's so close too. When was he? The 50s? Yeah. Uh, he was, he honestly, the but, 40s. That's when he created Captain America. Oh right because mm-hmm. it's World War II. Yeah. And Nazis. Not, not only did he create all these iconic characters with Stanley, him and Joe Simon created Captain America and then there's a character in modern day Marvel, the one above all, who's basically supposed to be God. And of course, they designed him to look like Jack Kirby. I heard a theory the <laughs> other day so. that uh, one above all was in Avengers in that deleted scene, the first Avengers really? movie. He gives Mark Ruffalo the motorcycle to get to Manhattan. Oh, that was, was that a dude? Scene. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of like that. Are you a big guy that gets all little, or a little guy that uh, sometimes blows up large? That's. I mean, if Ben Grimm is going to pop up as the guy Tony Stark saved in the first Iron Man movie, when uh, the helicopter's going, they're going to say that's Ben Grimm. I'm thinking that's about to happen. I mean, they man. do that with what? Peter Parker. They say he's the kid in Iron Man 2. Yeah, in Iron Man 2. Yeah. I feel like that's the, 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 you can just do it. Yeah, I know. And I'm yeah. okay with that. Yeah. Give us some world building there, man. I don't give a I, shit. I loved in no, in no, not No Way Home, Far From Home, when they took the guy from A Christmas Story, when he was the Tony Stark built oh. this in a cave. Oh, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Just a throwaway yeah. scene, and then they made it one of the main villains. Yeah, I only saw that movie one time. What, Far From Home? Yeah. Oh, I loved Far From Home. That's the second one. That's the second one. I would not have expected you to say that. I am a sucker for Mysterio. Wow. And that was my problem with that movie. <laughs> which I, just, I couldn't... How like, did he, how that's did, my least favorite part. Did he manipulate <laughs> the drones? What did he do? How did he frame Peter? How did he frame Peter? He It was less what he did. It's what uh, the, the bald guy did from the first movie. When he died, uh, he manipulated the footage to make it seem like... What Peter was saying was out of context. So that wasn't like it, a plan of Mysterio. It was Mysterio. It was was, Mysterio was helping out with it, but it was like the person who really brought it to life was the bald guy. I was shocked they killed him off. Yeah, when me I was too. seeing No Way Home, I was like, he'll pop up at some point. That's mm-hmm. going to be the sixth member. Oh yeah, because nobody gives uh, the Sinister <laughs> Six. Man, they had a one run. I couldn't even handle of that. six issues mm-hmm. in like the eighties. Yeah, 
And that was it. And like, they keep trying to make this th- a thing. Because, they appeared once in the 60s. Yeah, and Sony has to make a, so- a Spider-Man Sony movie every few years, otherwise they'll lose their licenses. And that's how we got Madam Web. That's my eighth grade guidance counselor just watched Morbius. He texted me Morbid two time. hours ago. He said, I'm watching Morbius. And I called him and I said, stop watching this. Mm-hmm. Stop watching Turn it. Off. And then he called <laughs> me two hours later. And he was like, I finally found a movie it's that like made ring. Green. Yeah. yeah. He was like, I found a movie that made Green Lantern look like a masterpiece. And Fantastic Four movies, uh, the one in the 90s, <laughs> shit. Um, Roger Corman. Roger Corman movie. Doom, it's clobbering time. The animated series, mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. I watched a good chunk of it today. Oh, the theme yeah. song is corny the, as shit. The theme yeah. song is the best. But the voice acting, incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four 2000s movies, Good. Yeah, except for you it's, know Galactus. It, well, it's good with the heroes, bad with the villains. Even I think Silver, Silver Surfer, Surfer was good, but he's less a villain. But Doom, but Galactus, I don't like what they did with Doom. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I just in the mo- in the two thousands movie. I didn't sequel? like it. Yeah, really? the first or second one. I Both. I just I didn't, I didn't think they did Doom right. Like really? he didn't. I, I didn't have the pompous feeling. He had the yeah. the, the, the the pretentious, mm-hmm. but nothing to back it up. Like Doom's supposed to be like if he says I'm gonna turn you inside out, you don't fuck with him because he can do that. Shit. He came off like Justin Hammer, not like Victor Von. Yes, Doom. and I think that was fresh off the Nip Tuck success. Whoa. Where he was like, "Hey, I'm getting straight to DVD money. These are never going away, buddy." I yeah. He was nipped tuck. Yeah, and then we can't wow. talk about Fantastic Four movies without. Ugh, don't say it. Fan four stick. Uh... You know, here's the thing: you're gonna be mad at me for. Didn't hate it until you the end. You didn't hate that movie. Didn't hate it till the end. Ugh. I was able to be okay with the like creative I'd liberties. Die. Yeah, he just lost a lot of respect again. for me. Did not hate I it. Hated that movie. What did so you much. hate about it? And and I I, I want because it's it's people. A lot of people didn't like this the book we chose today. We're reading yeah, Fantastic no, Four Life yeah, Story. That I disagree with them about. I think this movie. I think this book's amazing. But again, people are entitled to their opinion. They are even if they're wrong. I yeah. well, honestly, what I hated the most about that movie was my expectations, not because I love the Fantastic <laughs> Four so much. What I hated the most was myself. Yeah, <laughs> like for for getting my hopes so high because the director Josh Trank made this other movie Chronicle. Did you ever see that? No, but I heard that about movie Chronicle. was awesome. That oh. was such an awesome. Did that you came see that? out. No, that came out before or after. It came out before. That's why he got Fantastic Four, um, and it was just like. And then he fucked it up. It was like a found. It was kind of like Cloverfield for superheroes. It was like a found Ooh, footage superhero movie. That's cool. It was awesome. It was Dane Dehan before he was big. Michael B. Jordan before he was big. Like wow. uh, Michael Kelly was in it. It and was really. He directed Fan Four Stick. He directed Fan Four Stick because of Chronicle, and he like, was directing a, allegedly a Boba Fett movie yeah. that got shut down allegedly. because Fanta- Fan Four Stick had such horrible views. They oh, shut yeah. it down during production. And and the cast fan of Fan Four Stick is amazing. I mean, like, that's uh, the logo. It says there's no A. It says Fan t- Four Stick. Well, that's why Michael B. Jordan was <laughs> in stick. Fan I'm Four Stick fan. because he was in a. <laughs> I couldn't not. Even... Sorry, They're gonna sorry. hear it and they'll be like, "I want to hear more about a stick." <laughs> <laughs> I love sticks. Heard Michael Six. B. Jordan the that went stick and stick kill manga my throat. What? Uh, what, what was the? Oh, so because Michael B. Jordan was in Chronicle, that's why he was in Fan and Four Fantastic Stick, yeah. Four, yeah, and uh, Fan Four Stick. I can't, yeah, yeah, that's the, all the, I'm thinking. Here's how the movie Every ends. Every dog is a Fan Four Stick. Here's how this movie ends. They're all sitting there at the end of uh, barely a mission, mm-hmm. whatever they did, playing fetch. Yeah, basically, <laughs> they went to go get Doom, and he was melted with his tin foil suit, and then I don't know what they did with him. Like, and they're well, all sitting there, and, uh, and Reed's like, he's, they're like, we're gonna have to come up with a name of some kind. And then Ben Grimm goes, I gotta tell you, looking out here is pretty fantastic. And he goes. Say that again. And then he goes, what? It's fantastic. And then boom, credits fan four stick. Say that again? That's, that's really sad. That's why it's so good when movies make fun of that. Like what Deadpool did with that when he sees the name Deadpool. He goes, oh, yeah. he goes Deadpool. And he goes, Captain Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just go, no, 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 just Deadpool. No, no, no. Run and it back. Now <laughs> where we are with the Fantastic Four is they're going to sort of because I guess where they failed to get Tom Holland to be the new Robert Downey Jr., they're going to separate it into fours with Pedro Pascal, uh, Joseph Quinn as the torch. Um, who's playing the thing? Uh, the dude the from g- Punisher? The guy from, yeah, and the guy from Chef, uh, Ebon Moss. Yes. He's the guy that ate ass on girls. Well, oh, I mean, that's a different super bad. Yeah, I watched up to episode two. I said, this show ain't for me. Um, <laughs> Uh, and who's the who's Sue? Uh, Sue is uh, Vanessa Kirby. She's great. What's she been in? She's Ooh, in uh, the no Crown. No reason to to Jack Kirby. <laughs> oh, oh. No. and distant relative. Look at you, Slater. Yeah. Yeah. But no relation. No, she's British. God uh. damn it. 
She says, I couldn't have it, Brett. Well, because Jack, Kirby, Jack they, Kirby's real name is Jack Kurtzberg. I should have been <laughs> Jewish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, he, yeah. Was there a, a Holocaust stuff fleeing involved in that at all? No, uh, I think it was more probably like my family, like the pogroms, like uh, like early 20th century stuff, like fleeing And once Russia. you come over here, he's like, yeah. okay, yeah, switch your name. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, did, you, so did you switch your name to Birnbaum? We... I was going to say, that was a horrible choice, dog, yeah. if you're trying not to be personal. Like, uh, you like looked around Our family Island. name was like Mullenkov or something Burn like Bob. that. Mullenkov. And we were, and like my my ancestor was like trying to dodge the whatever the Russian draft was. And always so, one. Yeah, oh, and then yeah. and he stayed with a family called Burnbaum, and so that's why when he went over in Ellis Island, that's how it became Burnbaum. That's crazy because my Burnbaum. name was Burnbaum, and then we moved to Ellis Island, and they said too many, and they changed it to Harrison They're for like, a while. Look. Then for a while it was Simpson because I, I was adopted by OJ. Um, but that was during the 90s. That's where he flipped out. I you were the, the, carpet. <laughs> you were the last thing. one you know, on Ellis Island. I about myself. There was two seconds where I believed you. I mean, it's... Oh, my gosh. That's gosh. how I became a Never. comedian because Never. dumbass kids in my special class used to believe that all the time, too. And no that's how I'm, written on the ceiling. I talked to a woman out of a pizza on the plane yesterday. It was great. I was like, yeah, these make you so sick, don't they? Uh, I don't mind. I live in New York. I eat garbage. You're not getting yours? Sure. Oh, Ate her whole second pizza. Nice, you little. You rat. are the chosen one. Um, what other history did I have about FF? Okay, so their first issue, um, as we said, created by Stan and Jack. Uh, they first appeared in Fantastic Four number one um, in 1961. And when we go into Life Story, the first thing we see is JFK. I've always thought of the Fantastic Four as Marvel's JFK, where. JFK's whole thing was, let's go out there. Let's go explore. Let's put a man on the moon. Put a man on the moon. Put a man the on the decade. moon. And I want to look on uh, at uh, 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 Marilyn Monroe's moon. And uh, Bobby's going to take turns. And then we're <laughs> going to go see Sam Melvin. Giancana's girlfriend. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's going to be me, Sam Giancana, Marilyn. We're going to have chowder. Chowder. Chowder today. That's not what your chowder can do for you. But how you can eat chowder out of Norma Jean's asshole. That's Marilyn's real name. <laughs> Frankly, this is going to be the best chowder we've ever had. It's going to be fantastic. Mr. Fantastic, speaking of which, I need you to go and um, or, uh, peg Mr. Khrushchev. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nick Sinehi, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't stand a chance against me. Oh! Does not stand a chance, that guy. And my head is bulletproof. Um, <laughs> Kennedy represented that new era, and, and, and the Fantastic Four represented that new era for Marvel. Yes. And I, fe I feel like there's a kinship just with the cosmic, with the exploration, with the... The world isn't as it seems, and if it is, ask why and why not. And and that's who they are. And Reed, over the years, gets more blatant with his arrogance and why he's wrong. But in this, right off the bat, they kind of show you oh, yeah. co consequences of his arrogance. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, guys, let's go on this authorized mission. Boom, everybody gets sick, and Ben Grimm, like, I don't know how Ben didn't kill him. I will never understand that in my life, Dude, how Ben just yeah. got yeah. taken. He's, he's and too, loyal. too loyal. You broke yeah. my Batmobile! Broke it or made it better? Ooh. You broke back. He, he put my Batmobile on top of my Mr. Fantastic Donny Osmond figure. I love the thing in the, da, but the thing, it's but Batman's the, the only one that fits in my Batmobile. <laughs> when uh, I was auditioning for the Human Torch, I got third-degree burns. I just took a guess. Tank and I you were like, Here's I really audition. went into full <laughs> character <laughs> mode. But Joseph Quinn got it, so let him get it. Hopefully, they'll cast me as Robin. Your birds are doing really well. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, is Dick Grayson going to be the Robin in there? If it's, if it's Dick Grayson, oh, I'll yeah. take Dude, it. You Dick Grayson. Great Dick Grayson. And then I could be Nightwing. And you could be Nightwing. Two parts, two checks. <laughs> Wow. Um, or Same or bag. we make him Booster Gold, as I've always said. You too. know it's going to be Ryan. They're I not going to give me that. Um, what else did I have here? Many superheroes at the time, Fantastic Four, weren't, they weren't secret vigilantes. Like, they got their powers and then moved and to the Baxter building and then became, like, a thing of, of good. What are you saying? Yeah, no, I was going to say, they straight were like, what up? Yeah, <laughs> this is they us. were like, let's there use was, this for humanity. no time. They walked outside. Why did they call it the Baxter building? I don't, I, you know it's going to be Avengers Tower, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, know yeah, all, all the time. Um, and they've kind of gotten darker over the like once they leaned into the Sue's being neglected by Reed thing they immediately bring in the Namor love triangle um, and it it Reed never really learns uh, he just sort of puts himself deeper in his work and that's why one of my favorite characters is the maker because that's just that's evil Reed Richards yeah, totally. and every time I'm reading it I'm like I can't believe that's Reed Richards oh yeah that's Reed Richards who, who went to the gym and worked out after he lost his girlfriend <laughs> um, and he was a great villain in, in, in uh, uh, Secret Wars and I don't think that there is a better person what did you think of Krasinski as a uh, Reed Richards I mean I we didn't get Kr to see much I, of him. I love Krasinski as Reed Richards I know it was fan casting whatever you know who else was fan casting Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier like, yeah. yeah Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark I mean like a lot yeah. of times these fan is, castings happen for a reason. What's wrong with appeasing the fans? Yeah. 
Yeah. Get, instead of giving us another Marvel's movie. John Krasinski yeah. is so like Reed Richards though. Totally. Like he's it's literally just Jim from the office with superpowers. He's never gonna be able to escape. Like that, he's no always just trying Jack to get Reacher, with the girl. Quiet places but he not. makes. He's always gonna be Jim. He's got girl issues and everything he's in. Pedro is just cashing them Disney checks, Dude, man. Dude, Pedro's gonna be so good he's though. Oh my god, don't around. tell he's gonna about be great. Pumper. I know, I know we covered this, but like on He's gonna be great. But like they announced that because they knew that shit was gonna get leaked. And they're like, okay, let's just put that out there. Yo. A year ago that would have broke the internet. We all knew now, so it was like, okay, all right, yeah, let's get him. The nope. Joseph Quinn one was surprising, though. That was surprising, yeah. yeah. Who who, who were you thinking? Troy Bond. <laughs> I mean, I would have loved to be Johnny. I don't think I have an edge to me enough to be Johnny. Johnny's kind of a bad boy. I've only seen yeah, Joseph no. Quinn in one thing, but I have to say, yeah. he was amazing. He was yeah. great in that, yeah. and I've seen nothing but Hellfire Club shirts and uh, 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 a purple hair that hasn't been washed in a few days ever since then. <laughs> um, but we have got no MCU. Yes. Fantastic Four, and there's been a hole in my heart for FF. I love them, um, and this book, if you if you are like me and you weren't really sure where to start, like the Spider-Man Life Story one, this is an all-encompassing, beginning to end, uh, all the stories you really need to know a microdose of, and if you found one chapter you particularly liked, you can go back and find so many books about that, but it's chaptered off into decades, um, and Fantastic Four Life Story. In my opinion, I don't know what people have criticism about it. I'd love to hear it. Um, <laughs> this is the this is the best way to get into the characters, especially right now. Uh -huh. If you're a Marvel fan, you love the MCU, you don't really know what books to get into because you're gonna have a hard time reading the Kirby ones. If those are the first ones, they just they're not for your eyes. Yeah, if no. you're a young kid, like we read Dark Phoenix, uh, and that was wrong for a lot of reasons. But the <laughs> the wording back in the day just was so much, man. Yeah, it's I was honestly thinking about this recently. I don't think I really like comics before the 80s anymore. And I mean, after, uh, yeah, before the 80s. Like, all my favorite comics are the 80s and beyond, which is crazy because when I was raised on comics, I was raised reading the Stan Lee and Kirby and yeah. Dingo runs on Amazing and Fantastic Four and Avengers and, like, some of the Silver Age Justice League stuff. But now, like, I mean, after trying to reread Dark Phoenix and, like, but the 80s, I don't see the issue. I mean, Watchmen, Craven. Long, uh, uh, an, I, I read like, Nightfall recently. Yeah, hold up. When Holy. did they? When did they transition to uh, spoon feeding? Though, like what? just the obvious. Oh, like the speech bubbles lines. or the yeah, or like the, they're the, just like the descriptors. What is that? <laughs> like, I think it's it, a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. Yeah. like they really dumbed it down from pre eighties to to after. You know what You're I mean? You're saying pre eighties it was dumber or pre no no no, no it was smart less smart. I think she's uh, talking about the the speech like uh, as uh, it, the thought bubbles yeah. or the the the. Uh, the narration that wasn't from any character, mm -hmm. like the Spider-Man 90s show where he's like, if only I use my web to open this door. Yeah, like, did they do that because they were directing it more I, towards kids? You ever see the movie Adaptation? Of, uh, no. That like, is in the, the actual movie. I was like, of what? Yeah, the actual <laughs> movie Adaptation. <laughs> the, movie ad the movie Adaptation, the Charlie Kaufman movie. No, no, no. So that movie, uh, there's a line in it where it's just like the entire movie, the main character has voiceover, and then he goes to a screenwriting class, and the screenwriter says, and don't you ever use voiceover in your screenplays. It is cheap writing. Then all of a sudden the voiceover disappears from the movie. I think it was like that. Oh. I think it's more of a show don't tell approach now with comics. Okay. Because before when they were just showing the thought bubbles, it was almost cheap writing. Now yeah. it's kind of yeah. conveying what's happening. Like we we are seeing it play out. It used to be yeah. hard to draw back then too. Now you can do it all digitally. Totally. Like <laughs> those guys it used to be hard with those you've number seen two pictures pencils. of Jack Derby uh, Jack Kirby's uh, desk. Yeah, dude. Dude, Insane. every fucking like it's like stop motion. It's yeah. Like every it's every second panel. you yeah. have to like And that's just him animate. drawing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it goes off to coloring and, yeah. and, and your your work comes back. That's why that dude created so many iconic characters because it was just like churning them out, churning them out, churning them out, churning them out. Yeah. And I feel like Uncle Junior, every last one of them could you know who else was based off Jack Kirby? That was kind of Homer. You know when the... Yeah, was yes, kinda they Homer. were very good, Mark. <laughs> Every last one of them good. What the fuck are you talking about? Fantastic Wait. Four don't eat pussy? That's what happened. They're, they're they're had the like, makings of a varsity like adventure. Very similar. I'm just really... They are. Yeah. Marge. Yeah. I feel cosmic ray. I've always thought that about Travolta and Walken. Like, because Walken is crazy. Travolta's like, oh my God, Sandy. And he's uh, also oh God, crazy. Sandy. Sandy. He has a sexual perversion, and he's a Scientologist. <laughs> and Dan Turpin, the detective from DC, Superman's buddy, his design was based off Jack Kirby. Uh, I don't oh. even know who that is, that character. He, uh, did you watch Superman the Animated Series? Of course. Remember the cop that uh, that Darkseid kills? Oh, yeah. yes. Dude, the best, just sidebar, and then we'll get into the story. I just watched that episode where he fights Darkseid, oh, so and then he takes him to Apocalypse, and then the slaves take Darkseid back, and he's like, you'll never understand Kryptonian. Just, just subjugation mm -hmm. in a children's show. I was watching that at four years old with Tim Daly. Tim Daly. 
Chris, you're in the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's who does Superman that's in the '90s. Uh. That's Tim Daly from uh, Sopranos. Um, anyway, that's thank so you for uh, accepting crossovers. so many books I've uh, recommended to of you, course. and you said, "Yeah, let's d- let's do it." And uh, I love reading new books. This was a good one. This I'm was, excited ooh. to read. I love this book. This what? What did you like about this? What did you love about this? He hasn't I love let this. Go of it. Well, <laughs> it's, I feel there, and I'm sure I'm sure I'm wrong here, but I feel there isn't a quintessential Fantastic Four kind of like trade paperback story that Agreed. you can pick up in Barnes and Nobles. The way that we were able to do Craven mm-hmm. with uh, with Spidey, the way that there were just so many Batman books, we we're all star with Superman. I don't really feel that way about the FF, and I think this book. It's kind of that. It really captures everything that makes the Fantastic Four great. And it brings in their two main villains. Like, Doctor Doom, obviously, yeah. the greatest comic book villain outside the Joker, probably. And Galactus, who is so well done here. Javier Bardem, man. That's who's got to uh, play him. That's all I'm reading. That's in actually, voice. I didn't know that. He's going to play him? Flip the coin him? toss. If you want me to, it's the most you've ever lost. In a he's point fucking point. great, dude. That's why I want to play him. Oh and if he's coming out and saying I took Dune for my son and uh, Cinderella for my daughter, motherfucker, take Fantastic Four for me. Yeah, I yeah. watch No Country for Old Men, Every Hotel I'm in on the road. I'm gonna read Speaking of which, you could catch Brent Birnbaum on the road with me Ooh. in May May 9th, Spokane, Washington. Spokane, Washington. And Slater Spoken. Harrison will well be in Spoken. Grand Rapids with me next weekend. Ooh, fuck. Yeah. We're keeping the Bat Fam rolling. I if anybody here is listening, and we have live shows for secret identity that we're planning right now um uh some of them will be cosplay uh one rule is don't wear any hockey pads um <laughs> yeah. with that being That's said important. was there anything else we, we can do any help <laughs> <laughs> so. not by my dog no, we just watched that right i know right i was i was queuing you up for that i uh, <laughs> I, uh, I want i want the soundboard somebody back. in the uk <laughs> gave me a, a 4k ultra uh uh blu-ray of the dark knight Let's and godfather go. and it looks Incredible. Oh, yeah. that's what we're yeah. gonna watch when we do commentary. Um, <laughs> Can we just do the Godfather? Just, I have Godfather <laughs> in four K. Yeah. I love it. I know we should do Dark Knight. We should do both. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I guess this movie and comic. Pod. Can we play them simultaneously, like a split screen? Like, wait, if you put on a, a Pink Floyd to Fantasia, yeah, and then play uh, it backwards. If we do Dark Knight <laughs> and Godfather, that's just Long Halloween. Yeah, it's oh long. That just kills you twice. <laughs> It insists upon it. Insists I bet upon scenes itself. would sync up weirdly at some points, and it would be fucking trippy. Yeah, it would be Sicily. <laughs> the Joker says that. You're like, well, I've never heard that before. Where's the Italian? <laughs> they say that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Don Corleone. I'm not Italian. I'm Italian. You see, the thing about Apollonia is <laughs> you don't talk to a man with no green like that. <laughs> Uh, do uh, was there anything else you wanted to add? <laughs> Fredo, I you're can't my kid forget brother. about it. You're the symbol of hope I can never be. Never take sides against the family. I'm smart. <laughs> I can do things. Mr. Wayne, how do you say banana daiquiri in Spanish? Banana daiquiri. That's how you say it, Mr. Wayne? That's right. You say it's important to keep your friends close <laughs> and your enemies closer. Years ago, I knew a man named Hyman Rolf. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we get to make you laugh on this now because it was uh, really just a contest to see who could break first. The Mo Green line broke Wayne me. Wayne Newton, the first. Oh, yeah. Was I got to mention in a few episodes. Shout out W N. W N. Big Wayne. I know my letters. <laughs> the big Wayne. He's never been called that. <laughs> big, the wine. big Wayne. That's what they call him when they Not let him on the FBI chasing him. He's a big, the big boy. Wayne. He's like, Dunk, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Do you have a favorite Fantastic Four character? Wow, he really switched that up quick. Yes. I was just gonna I had a question lined up too, yes. but I'll answer yours first. No, no, Do I have yeah. a favorite? Uh I feel biased. Like I feel Im- impartial to, to Sue. Sue, yeah. Sue. Susie. She was great. Susie Q. Yeah. Um yeah, mainly because my intro to Fantastic Four was the movies in the 2000s, and I'm so just obsessed with Jessica Alba. How yeah. like, can She could wear any hair difference. color and pull it off. And to your point earlier, blondes, I guess, do have more fun in those movies. I said that? No, no, no. You, you said that the blondes were finally becoming, like, victorious and not just, like, a damsel in, the st- in distress. I did? Yeah. 
You were talking about blondes earlier. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how people can look at them and be like, oh, a like, blonde like woman. This like 10 minutes ago. I'm a champion for women. Like, I'm a closeted <laughs> feminist. No, I just started I just thinking about <laughs> Jessica Alba again, and I was like, what's she doing? You like, literally, as soon as I like, said Jessica Alba, he just went out the window. It's like, yeah. I am bricked up. I'm not going to lie. That was kind of scary. <laughs> she, yeah. Yeah. You, you were spitting some good wisdom about yeah, the blondies. I can't wait to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I just Cut it do back. things. Yeah, exactly. You, you have a favorite FF? Favorite FF? Oh, Ben Grimm, obviously. Can't beat him. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was just going to say, yeah. and if yours is Reed Richards... <laughs> Then we are the people. I go back that and forth though. Favorite. I do. I, I like. I like Reed a lot. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I one thing that's so sad is we're never going to get to see him and Tony on screen mm-hmm. together. Oh, dude! Civil uh, War without Reed Richards. I love Captain America: Civil War. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Eh, wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Wong. These wascally wabbits. <laughs> yeah, Reed. Reed is there, but like. Oh God. I don't know, man. Like it's he's 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 right when he's right, and Civil War rushed the whole. Big heartbreak was Sue leaves him in Civil yeah. War. Yeah, oh, it's a great scene too. Sue, yeah. you, when we have Joey on, that's like the one book he's read. Joey mm-hmm. Rinaldi, he's gonna lose his shit over that because it takes place in Stamford, Connecticut, where he grew up. Oh, no. I remember oh. lending it to him, and he, he's like Morty. He's like, oh, jeez, Stamford, <laughs> Connecticut. Uh, I was there. I know that. Be in the story for very long. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Jesus, <laughs> about five pages of Stamford, yeah, Connecticut. Yeah, God, and then a lot of sad kids. <laughs> Uh, I remember reading the issue where Spider-Man took his mask off in fifth grade. I was at the bus stop, mm-hmm. seven in the morning, watching Jay flip over his, his chair mm-hmm. over his desk. One of the best. You don't have those big moments in comics anymore. Mm-hmm. Like these big things where everyone's going to the shelves yeah. and buying these. You know, It was, like, it was shown by from J. Jonah Jameson's perspective, which was amazing. The, yeah. Uh, Did you not go to school then, Tay? No, I was going to. I was on the bus. Oh, I was book. like, I just pictured you as a little kid fucking reading it, and then that happens. You're like, what? And throws it and just walks back to the house. <laughs> Fuck this Not shit, Not going man. to school today. My dad called out of work at the last Harry Potter book. I remember that. Really? Yeah, he was really mad at how it ended, and he didn't go to work. He's like, like I'm wow, taking J.K. Rowling got your money twice. Personal day. Yeah, he's like, Ron Weasley wasn't black this whole time. I didn't realize that there was, like, more to <laughs> just the movies that I saw. I didn't realize there was, like, more history and future. And I saved fuck. this panel when I was reading it on the plane yesterday after they all get their powers and they're coming up with their names. Mm-hmm. It oh is my God. some of the saddest shit I've ever read in my life, and it's I don't know why pathetic. Ben Grimm just didn't unalive himself after. But <laughs> He got the worst well, I know, of the he's deal. Just like, he goes, and he goes so I'm bad. like this disgusting th- thing. Th- yeah. <laughs> Everyone else is pulling just him out of their ass. Thing. Reed is some balls being like, I'm Mr. Fantastic. All right, are you in the closet, dude? dude? You hanging dude. out with the coat hangers, Mr. Fantastic? <laughs> like, Mr. That's Super the best. I thought about it all night. Ben's <laughs> name is Mr. My Life is fucking over. I can't even kill myself. I'm Mr. Um, Fantastic. I have one of the coolest superpowers in the world, and I'm never going to use it. Well, he can't be a last boy. <laughs> He never uses his stretching powers. No, he, he doesn't. doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, he well, does. Okay, cool that, power. Was, that was the thing I was going to ask before is out of all the powers, which which one would you Sue. pick? Sue. You would want that? Mm-hmm. You got to strip down to get invisible? At least she did in the movies. That was probably yeah. just for her storyline. I'm scared of lying. <laughs> Johnny feels like that's a lot of responsibility. I'll take Reed's power. Fire? I think Reed's, I think Reed's got a great power. He just doesn't use it. What yeah. would you use it for? What would I use it for? Stretching ability. Oh, Dunk? Uh, yeah, no, I would just up, I would update my hinge profile to 6'3". <laughs> Tell but you would have to stretch every day. Smart. What? You would have to stretch every day. Worth it. I guess yeah. so. Yeah, I do it every time I, I get an erection. My dad is 6'3". Every time people meet me and him together, they're like, what happened? And I'm like, <laughs> we first off, I'm 5'11". Thank you, you very much. You ever get a DNA test, buddy? <laughs> yeah. You are not related. Um, I would use it to go under my door and unlock it. That's what you did in the movie. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I lock myself out of this apartment so much that that would really come in handy. I met Lone McGruffle uh, years ago when I was working background in Queens. He played Mr. Fantastic. And and voiced Mr. Miracle on Justice League. Mr. Miracle on Justice League. And uh, I was sitting next to him and I was like, I'm about to talk to Mr. Fantastic. I just straight up lied. I was like, I was Mr. Fantastic every year for Halloween. And he was like, oh, that's great. That movie made a lot of, a lot of money. Bought me a summer house. And uh, he'll probably be in Secret Wars. <laughs> Natural so, like, response. Buckle up. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would love to see them as a family. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see them as a young, bickering version, like Pedro, perfect age, Kirk be same oh. age, uh, the... Johnny being the young guy there, perfect. I can't wait to see him butt heads with Micro from Punisher. All that's going to be sick. That's going to be a lot of fun. Joseph, he's doing a great thing. He needed this because it's been a long time since Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. He needs another one of these big ones. He does. Pedro Pascal, you can put into anything and he's he, he will me. kill it. <laughs> nice. 
I just love him so much. Every time you say his name, I'm like... You want to talk oh. about him for... I'll give you one minute to talk about Pedro. Pedro. Go on for one straight minute. I'll time it and go. Well, I have to leave it. I know. Minute. It's your last minute to talk so about I'm gonna Pedro. So I'm going to go to the comedy club? What? I'm going to yeah. have to change? Slater has to go. She has to go work. But she, I'm going to give her the last minute to talk about Pedro Pascal. And uh, go. So the year was 1992. <laughs> I was born. And then... Uh, no, I'm trying to actually think the first time that I was introduced to, to Pedro... I hope we're actually timing. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for it to go to six. Oh, nice. oh, my God. I mean, I think it was Game of Thrones, actually. You raped her! You murdered her children! <laughs> oh, my God. I sang that in my sleep. That's a oh, issue. And he was so good in that. Oh. He six was o'clock. so good in that. No, that wasn't even a minute, bitch. I'm trying to actually think the first time that I was introduced to, to Pedro. Any last Pascal. words? Pascal. Want to say any of the camera? I love you, Pedro. <laughs> if you're listening, help me. I'm being held hostage. We're going to take a quick commercial break from Ben Grimm. After that, we're going to summarize Fantastic Four Life Story. All right, so just read this off the paper. Is there any way that I can get some lemon tea with honey? My voice is kind of gravelly. <laughs> Uh, let's get this over with. Hey, how you doing? It's Ben Grimm here, head honcho cheese in charge for the Fantastic Four. Hey, has anybody ever told you to go kick rocks? Well, here's the answer to your queries about quarries. It's Grimm's Gravel. From marble to limestone, granite to sandstone, you bet your bottom dollar, our rocks rock. And it'll barely cost you a thing. <laughs> yeah, for the price of only one laxative, Benny Boy will drop trow and squeeze you out a new countertop. Why, you subway scum, you better run, back, stick. I'm about to make your eyes look like ears, Johnny! Should be available everywhere except Liberia. This is all about FF. FF, baby. FF. FF, FF. life story. Life story. What are your thoughts going into this book? I, I was interested. I was interested to see what it would be like to... Uh, showcase the Fantastic Four over the decades. But I think this really works. It works because it, it's almost like they highlight what was going on in that era, like mm -hmm. the Spider-Man life story. In the 80s, you had Gwen Stacy. Right. And the, I, I agree with you. Uh, mm -hmm. And I did like the sex scene between Nixon and Kennedy. That was really That was cool excellent. I, it's, it's important to give the fans what they want. Slater just yes. texted me. Yes. His smile, his hair, him being a daddy with no kids, his toes, his laugh, his talent, him being drunk at the award show, his fashion, his voice, and the way he says his name. She's My talking real about, Pedro answer. She's talking about Nixon, not Pedro. Oh, yeah. That's what it's, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, the Gipper is about to <laughs> dipper. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Let me be clear. Uh, I came all over them ridiculous titty game. I'm so sick of these orgies and not. I don't know what's going on. It's ridiculous. One percent of me is a ninety-nine percent of you. Bernie would have been a great FF member. He would have been a great thing. I'm not uh, doing it. I'm not going out. I, I don't want to. Not going to throw another car. That's a working man's car. I look ridiculous. <laughs> I'm rocks. What the hell? My re my Bernie turns into Regis. What the hell is this? I'm Regis. Damn it. I want tax inequality for all, for all, Medicare for all, damn it. I'm rageous. I break things every time I've recorded my own house. You bring it out of me. It's like having my friend come over when I'm like 12 years old. Uh -huh. I'm like, I got pizza rolls and I get to talk about comic books for an hour. And people actually like it. Even if nobody listened to it, I would still do this podcast. If this podcast had 12 views a week, I would do it. I like it. I like these I pizza like rolls. I like this job. <laughs> Why don't you start us off? What, are we, yes. what, are we, what decade are we starting with? We start off in the 60s. So basically, and this, it's, it's kind of like real world. Russia has beaten the U.S. to space. So Kennedy talks to Reed Richards, who's one of the top scientists in the world, and says, hey, we need to, be, we need to go into space next. So they start planning a space shuttle uh, launch. But Reed's got a rival, this guy, Dr. Ricardo Jones. Oh, I think it's supposed to be Rick Jones. I think that's a... Who's Rick Jones? Rick Jones was like the Hulk's buddy. I'm not he's familiar. Like the, he's kind of like the Hulk's Jimmy Olsen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just around like bringing extra large pairs of purple pants and shit? I think so. <laughs> he's like, hey, man, you hit a woman last night. He's like, oh, the Hulk. No, no, no. Yeah. You did. Yeah. <laughs> you hit a woman, Bruce. <laughs> The Hulk uh, is fine. Bruce uh, is problematic. Hulk upset for Hulk actions. <laughs> Hulk only act that way because Hulk father taught him it was okay. No, no, Hulk, you're good. That was all no, Bruce. Yeah, that was Bruce Banner, the dude who's tenure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so Ricardo Jones is jealous of Reed, and so he decides to shut down Reed's project. So Reed is uh, working on it with Sue, I believe, and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. We're just going to go into space anyway. We're going to commandeer this mission, but they don't, they don't know any pilots. 
So in a kind of a break from the original comics, uh, Johnny Storm, Sue's brother, kind of tags along with them, and he knows a pilot. He knows Ben Grimm. Because in the comics, Ben is Reed's friend. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, in this he wasn't. He yeah. wasn't. He was, uh, yeah, he was Johnny's friend. But that's when they go into space, and that's when they get their powers. Yeah. Uh, stretching, fire, uh, invisibility, and the thing being super strong. But this time when they're in space, Reed sees something. He sees a vision of a giant person, almost like a force, and that's Galactus. Do you think he was there, or did he see the vision of it? Did the rays make him see the vision? I think the rays made him see the vision. I don't think Galactus was there. I think he found a way to see Galactus, mm. and I think that's the beginning of their psychic connection. But he could see Galactus at that point, but Galactus couldn't see him. Oh, that's mm. right. That's right. right. Galactus, does he have any secret, uh, psych, psychic powers, any telepathy? I, he can... He has, the even, all, he has the cosmic. Yeah, you know, he's, he's like, basically he's basically just one with the universe. Like, yeah. Do we know? Do we even? Is there like a planet of the Galacti? So Galactus was originally this guy named Galen. He was from the okay. original universe before the Big Bang. Right. And he, when the Big Bang happened, he was the last person alive, and he made a deal with like kind of just the the universe that was falling apart. He's like, don't kill me. Let me be a part of this new universe. And so he was reborn as Galactus after the Big And he kind of repays that favor to everybody who he makes his herald yeah. in some weird ways. It you ever watch the Silver Surfer show? And I, I never did. So good. It's like six episodes. I used to love the comics, though. Through the, through the roof, man. Oh, nice. It's all on Disney+. Plus. We're having a 90s resurgence. Yeah. Give it a year. We'll have a Spider-Man animated series announcement where they'll oh, do sure. one more season because the show ended so mm -hmm. bad. Like... He never finds Mary Jane. Well, they're already doing that other Spider-Man show, though. They like uh, the plug, yeah. the Homecoming one. That's mm -hmm. not happening. You don't think? So? No, they they can't. Oh, they're they not doing it. it. The one where really? he's freshman year of high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not doing it. They they, they pulled the plug that? on that. Oh, yeah, like a year ago. I was not excited. about They that, hate like. animation. I don't know why. Uh. Give us the, uh, the Avengers Mightiest Heroes days, mm -hmm. or like w w Guardians of the Galaxy had its own show in the 2010s. The Ultimate Avengers. Ultimate Avengers was. We have no shows like that. What yeah. if every other year mm -hmm. is what I get? What if Nebula saved Christmas? What if I gave a fuck about that? Why watch anime? Which is why I'm in it now. What do I have to start next? Demon Slayer? Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Don't yes. let me start Demon Slayer. Do it. Demon Slayer. Avoid Demon Slayer. Uh, Brent fine, got fine. me into Attack on Titan. I've since watched it twice. That's our next episode. Full. Uh, uh, this man, that was the best thing you've ever given me. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Vincent D'Onofrio. And, and what differs that from AOT is Full Metal actually sticks the landing. Thank God. That's what I'm not looking forward to. I have one more episode left. I read the manga, though. I got him in a... In a uh, the AOT a, manga? Yeah. The manga's good. So good. Yeah. That pit, We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk, yeah. Okay, so, so after that, after, after this is going, what, yeah. he sees Galactus he in sees space. He sees Galactus, and, uh, and he's kind of haunted by what he saw. So everyone else in the Fantastic Four, they're adjusting to their new powers. Uh, ben is obviously furious about what has happened to him. He's now disfigured. But Reed is kind of like Chicken Little. He's like, there's this thing, Galactus, out there. He's coming for us. No one's listening. No one's listening to him. So then he goes back into space to find Galactus. And that guy, Dr. Ricardo Jones, stows away. And Ricardo Jones has always been saying, gaslighting Reed, saying this guy is full of shit. And then when they go back into space, not only do they see Galactus, Galactus sees them. So now Galactus is like, hey... I see you, and I'm coming to Earth because you came out and sought me out. And Ricardo Jones is like, oh, crap. Reed was right this whole time. So Ricardo Jones sacrifices himself so Reed can make it back to Earth and prepare for the Galactus invasion. 60s. The power of that is Galactus... Power. The power. The what? The power. He rarely... Talks to humans. Mm -hmm. One of the panels I love in, in the Watcher's first appearance where, where Galactus showed up... Uh, or maybe I'm confluting. The Watcher was there when Galactus was there. And they were like, why isn't Galactus listening to us? And the Watcher was like, do you converse with the cockroaches on your kitchen floor? That put Galactus into perspective for yes. me. So seeing him see Reed was was like a jump scare. That was kind of scary. Mm -hmm. I was scared for his. I was like, JB Smooth, oh, that's your fucking ass, Reed. We're just going to get up in there, <laughs> tap that ass. And then he's going to eat every part of that shit. Fucking Iron Rand, whatever the fuck Silver Surfer's name is. I call him motherfucking Tetris on a surfboard. <laughs> but... Incredible intro, and right Amazing. right off the bat, you get that Kennedy thing, which mm -hmm. like lets you know that these guys are still. The one thing I never liked is when they compare Xavier and uh, Magneto to Martin Luther King and Malcolm X because they were not written to be that. No. Um, one of the beautiful things that they did in this was immediately gave you that subtlety Kennedy connection mm -hmm. because that's who the FF are. St Iron Man is the military industrial complex. Mm -hmm. Like those guys were very. It's political because people can't understand politics a lot of the time but they can understand a comic book mm -hmm. 
Kennedy had such an influence of comics in the 60s. That's why we have Daredevil, an really? Irish Catholic superhero. That was a response to the Kennedy assassination. Really? Mm -hmm. Was he not a... He wasn't around before then? I don't think so. I think Daredevil debuted in 63 after Kennedy Whoa. was Whoa. That just gave me goosebumps, <laughs> man. Oh, wow. I should have saved that for Born Again, but... No, that's... <laughs> I mean, we're talking about... This, we're doing Born Again. We got Attack on Titan next week, then Born Again. And then uh, what's after that is up to us and none of your business. Mm -hmm. Keep listening to us, though. We got episodes. And we will be doing Kingdom Come. That's doing the Kingdom end of Come. season one. It's coming. We got a Kingdom Come shirt over right over there. It's coming. We're reading the comments because they're nice. Mm -hmm. um, what's next? 70s? Uh, 70s, yes. What happens in the 70s? So in the 70s, this is when Reed is connected with Tony. And yes. they are trying to prepare for the Galactus invasion. Again, no one's really paying attention to Reed except his lab partner, Mr. Victor Von Doom. That's that's Reed's lab partner. But, yeah, right? that's Reed's lab partner. They're both trying to prepare the world for the Galactus invasion. And Reed sees a kinsmanship in the sky, uh, kinship in the sky, Victor, who's the only one who seems to get him, who's saying, hey, we got to prepare the world for Galactus. But in doing so, he's neglecting Sue. Which is, Sue seems to be the only significant other in comics I can think of that so strongly won't put up with that bullshit. Yeah. Like Mary Jane will string along for a while. She has to, uh, or yes, Rachel in the dark Knight. She's not comics, but like, you know, she said, well, when this can happen, we could do this. Sue very much, even before her kids were at play. Cause once we see her have kids, she's very more like, fuck you, Reed, you better mm -hmm. get your shit together. Get out of the basement. At every stage, she very much was not written to be a damsel. Right. She's the matriarch and the most powerful. Mm -hmm. Of all the FF, like Wanda, there's a debate now because people love to hate Scarlet Witch, but most powerful fucking Avenger, man. Like, oh, yeah. She's got it. The, Wanda crazy. is probably the second most powerful character in the MCU behind Franklin. Which is, my dad told me about Franklin Richards when I was five years old, and it was, my, that's how my dad used to explain comics to me. Mm. We'd be driving home, and it'd be like a campfire story, and you're just visualizing all this. And I remember him telling me that Professor X had to go into his brain and make him forget that he had all these powers. And uh, they handled Franklin really well in this, I, I do. thought. I and love how they handled Franklin in yeah, this. Yeah, this and Secret Wars were two of my favorite Franklin handlings. And then they retconned him having godlike abilities to do whatever the fuck they did. We got an eight-issue Ben Grimm series that got canceled. I don't mm. know if you ever read that. I never read that. He got married in that one. Um, and Doom, does Doom have a liking to Reed at this at first? Or he just realizes he has a, he has a brain? Doom loves Reed. Yeah, like, Doom that's really, what I remember. Doom, yeah, Doom really sees, there's not like a rivalry like in the in the, in the, in the, in the other comics. Yeah. Like, there's a kinship here. But Doom, Doom feels the only way to protect the world from Galactus is to subjugate the world and put him and Reed in charge. He's like, that's the only way we can we can prepare. It's kind of, yeah. It's that's like, a solution for everything. Yeah. There's no parking. We have to subjugate the world. <laughs> God damn it, and make everyone obey. Yeah. He's like, the only way we can do this is if you follow our orders. Reed's like, obviously, you're crazy. And But it also, while doing this, Reed's completely neglected Sue, as we've said. And Sue, they have, they have a baby. They've they got have, Franklin. They have a baby, and also, he's kind of been a... He didn't really know Ben. But he, if I didn't know a guy in the street and I turned him into rocks... I'd be texting, like, calling him yeah. every day. Hey, what can I do? Hey, sorry, I fucked up your sorry, entire fucked up your life. life. You're probably never going to fuck again yeah. without it being uh, attempted murder. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, Johnny is the only one who's having a good time, yeah. really. Johnny's he's, having a great time. He's getting laid. He's doing car shows. He, he's going to be Captain America in what's a few that years. What's that Shirley line? Things are going a little too well Things for you, Things are going Johnny. a little too well for you. Mm-hmm. I knew something had to be going on. <laughs> the 80s is going to be a tough time for Johnny. Oh, sh oh yeah. Oh, man. Because he gets AIDS. <laughs> Yeah, Black Cat gives him AIDS. <laughs> Controversial subject line. But what uh, was the big event that happened in seventy? In the seventies, so Doom Doom attacks Reed because it's like uh, uh, you don't difference see of opinion. yeah difference of opinion. He's using his super powered suit to attack the UN. He takes out all the heroes except Sue, who's invisible. Sue takes him down, but Sue's like, you know what, Reed? I can't be with you anymore. She leaves Reed for Namer, and Reed moves in with his buddy Ben Grimm. Ben sees that Reed is alone. He goes, hey, hey, dude. Hey, Stretcho. I'm going to hey, live Stretcho, with you. Stretcho, how you doing? Because Ben is the fucking man. Even though this guy ruined his life, he's still there for Reed Ben Richards. has the most empathy of anybody mm -hmm. on the team. He knows exactly what that feels like. And I think the other members of the team would have done that too. Ben's the least, you would think he's the least likely to do yeah. it. And that is the, the absence of an emotion tells me a lot about a character in little moments like that. Like, oh, you okay. had it all along. You just, you're not going to be a pushover, and, and he's your team member. You just you included him as your team member, man. 
He's your boy. You're yeah. friends. At he a certain did. point, Ben is uh, come to terms with as much as you can. But like that was a pretty moment. That was a very. It was special such moment. a lovely moment. We talked about this with Peter Parker. Like Peter Parker doesn't want to be Spider Man. Right. He feels like he has to do this. I was talking to my buddy Joe about this, who pointed out that the thing it was the first reluctant superhero. He doesn't want to do this at all, but he still does it. And he does it to a T, man. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, probably the heart of the Fantastic Four. Absolutely. I don't think anybody else has it the way he does. Uh, and is the first one on the front lines, man, and and is never sure of victory either, I should point out. Mm-hmm. Almost every fight he goes into, he's like, hey, we're probably going to die in this one, Stretcho. I think that's why he says it's clobbering time. Yeah. Like, it's his Shazam, but like asking the gods, can you please finally clobber me? <laughs> every shit I've taken has been scratchy and grovel. It's clobbering, he's clobber like, me. He's like Deadshot, he's a suicide wish. Yeah, and and you don't, he can't kill himself because he's too strong, so he has no other choice than to inhabit this planet that hates him and be a I literal really low. I put a bullet in my mouth, and the other <sighs> guy spit, spit it out. out. Who, who, it, Stan Lee had a great thing. He was like, people ask me, who would win? The Thing or the Hulk? And the answer is, whoever's writing the story. So stop asking those bonehead questions. It's a great one. <laughs> who do you got your money on? Oh, the Hulk. Really? Yeah, I think they, I, I, think, I think they did that in the comics, and I think the Hulk won. You were aligned with the writer. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the thing better as a character, but I think the Hulk would Yeah, I can't it. get into the Hulk, man. Yeah. I tried reading Hulk comics. Some of them are good. The only good Hulk arc I've read recently was the one in Old Man Logan. Oh, yeah. And that made me sick. <laughs> oh, where, where are we at now? The 80s? 80s, yes. Johnny gets in a blow and Freddie Mercury. That's Yeah, Johnny's like the narrator in this story. He's having a great time. He's living his life. Reed and Tony are trying to sell in. I cried in this chapter. This I cried at the end of it. This is a beautiful chapter. Because that's when they try to sell in the security system to Reagan. Reagan is like, we love it, but not... Star to, Wars? Yeah, <laughs> Star Wars, but not to prevent Galactus. We want to use it against the Russians. Russians, yeah. Like, what? That was totally Reagan. Oh, yes, Nancy and her crystals told me we had to do that. <laughs> and uh, that guy who shot Jody for some ass, he's all right in my book with the big old gipper. I don't know if I sold weapons to Iran. I have dementia. He still had a uh, chip on his shoulder from being second billing in the movies to Jimmy Stewart. And a monkey <laughs> named Bonzo. I, I, it's crazy that like you're the president now. Uh, uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can stamp all these things. <laughs> oh, yes, I can declare Jews the same as darkies, and no uh, one's going to be any the wiser. Uh, Dutch, you don't want to do that. It's going to be very controversial. It's a miracle on Washington, D.C. Street. All right, you're going to have to get the hell out of this office now. And please put some pants on, Dutch Jimmy. Galactus is coming, and I will not put on pants. <laughs> Oh, is that is that Nancy? I better say hi. She's the, the, the throat goat. This is how we did things in the forties. We never wore pants. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Stewart's not gonna like this podcast when he listens to it because our podcast plays in hell, Spotify, YouTube, and hell. Because how else is a future Brian Singer gonna listen to this? Um, and I I like that he narrates it because jo- this is such a unique thing for Johnny. Whenever you have a character like him have an emotional moment, it's kind of corny. Yeah. And it's a reluctant one, and then it's also like Rick Sanchez, like, I'm okay with this. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like uh, when, when he's sacrificing himself for Morty. Morty. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, 80s are a Johnny Storm decade, man. Oh. If you were 80s or 90s, mm-hmm. but more 80s, I see him in, because he would, he would die young in the 80s to be uh, remembered in the 90s. We had the Johnny Storm jeans, the Johnny right. Storm cologne, uh, H&M Johnny Storm, all of it. Like, uh, 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 but, but what happens? Sorry, yeah. tell me. No, no, no. It's, uh, that, no, that, that's great insight. And yeah, what happens is, so this guy, Jose Santini, takes over the security system. Turns out Jose Santini is the mad thinker, and he, he breaks Doom out of prison. He doesn't break him. He gets him released to work with him. People don't know that he's a villain. And they hack into the missiles and launch the missiles uh, at Russia, like, it's supposed to be used as a security uh, uh, system. Like mm. They launch the missiles at Russia, and so all the heroes have to take out the missiles, and they get all of them except for one, and none of the Fantastic Four, and none of the Avengers are fast enough to get it except for Johnny Storm. And Johnny, who's kind of had a very nihilistic look at the world, he's just like, hey, let's live like this very hedonistic lifestyle. He, he makes the sacrifice play. He flies into the sky, he takes out this missile. He goes supernova, which is Johnny Storm's main power. And he takes out the missile, but he dies in the process. God, man, it's so good. It's so good. Just like him leading up to that, him because re- it's all throughout the narration. Mm-hmm. And the writer did such a great job at writing it in a way where it's like how your thoughts come at you. Mm-hmm. And he has one thing he's talking about, but he's really talking about this. 
And the, 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 well, fuck it. If I'm going to go out, this is how I'm going to go out. And, and if I don't do this, my friends die. Mm-hmm. I think he would have done that for any single one of them taking the bullet. But like they're probably, I mean, I'm sure they've had little one-off adventures. That was probably the most heroic thing anyone on the team has done up to that point in this story. I agree. He's the last guy you expected to make the sacrifice yeah. play, but he does it. It's very much like Tony in Endgame. Yeah, yeah. And uh, much like uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Dr. Doolittle, uh, uh, the people around him suffered because of that action. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> that's true. It, was, it, it uh, Johnny, man, I want to see him, Matt, and Spidey mm-hmm. just be street level foes beating the shit out of Wilson Fisk, man. I would love just that. Just give it to me. Also, how about Namer in this chapter when he sees the missiles are coming and he's like, Sue, we got to go. We got to go into the water. And, and Sue's like, <laughs> yeah, she's like, Franklin's not here. And he goes, we'll make another Franklin. <laughs> no, you didn't make the first one no more. Like the most namer shit ever, man. And like, he's always showing dick root and just like Colin Reed being like, I'm fucking your wife right now. Click like the, I loved how they portrayed him in, uh, in, in black Panther too. I want to see more devious namer. I think mm-hmm. with the arrival of fantastic four, we will get more of that. We'll see I, less of the Wakandans in Atlantis and more FF. And I love evil namer. He's so he. I don't even think he's, he's just petty. He's just petty. Yeah, he's a dick. His Illuminati stuff is always great, too. His Illuminati meeting before the Civil War, where he basically tells Tony Stark to go fuck himself. Because he's like, yeah, you made up your mind about this. Uh, he did a Cartman. He's like, no, you guys are in trouble. Screw you guys. I'm going home underwater. And then Sue ends up going to his house after that. I don't know if I would take her back if I were read after that. Granted, I know I'm the one that fucked up. Mm-hmm. But you left twice for Namor. You can't go see somebody do who's not a fish. Mm-hmm. Why don't you go see a guy at the coffee shop around yeah. the corner, barista? You got to go underwater to a fish man. He's pretty hot, though. That's Mr. Nimbus! <laughs> he controls the police, Morty! <laughs> Come on, somebody controls the police. <laughs> uh, so when he dies, the 90s happened. Yes. And is that when Ben gets married to Sinead O'Connor? Yes. That is yes. That. <laughs> and she rips up a picture of uh, Stan Lee on SNL. She goes, you're selling the rights to Sony. For Spider Man, so many references. It's I love it. I feel firing. you know, like the meme of like Char- of Charlie from. Uh... That's me. I was in Ireland for t- two days, man, and all the TikToks were Sinead O'Connor. So that stuff is fresh in my head. Nothing compares to you, Stan. Um, but nineties. What's 90s. the what we what do we got going on in the nineties? So year the, we were born. Yeah. Ninety. Were you nineties? Yeah, yeah, you were nineties. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I'm not eighties. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I knew you weren't, but like I was thinking of the joke we worked out back in the day, of like you know, as someone said, I look great for. Uh, Oh, for yeah, like 41. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> because you're so earnest, sometimes you'll say things. I'm like, holy shit, you're 41? <laughs> He's like, no, I, I, I'm kidding. 42. Uh, 90, do you, what do you remember about the 90s? Anything? I mean, Your I superhero born, journey I was in the born 90s. in 93, so yeah. I really don't remember that much of the 90s. I was 96. Like, yeah. I remember more of the 2000s yeah. than I do anything else. But yeah. that, was the, that was the golden era of superhero mm-hmm. movies for a lot of that, man. Totally. Like... Uh, and like, like, I don't remember when the first X Men came out. Like, do or don't? No, I don't. Oh, like, I do. That yeah. was the first first one I remember going to see. Then Phantom Menace. But I think it's because I was struck by lightning. I remember I Phantom Menace. I do remember that. I, yeah, I remember uh, seeing Waddle and be like, "That's not right." Um, <laughs> How is it not right? <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> I based him off Steven <laughs> Spielberg. <laughs> uh, they bombed their own hospital. Um, <laughs> I remember Spider Man Two vividly, front to back, mm-hmm. or Spider Man One. That being my first superhero movie in right. theaters as a kid. That was 2002, so I was like four, six, mm-hmm. so you're eight. That mm-hmm. I vividly remember seeing in theaters front to back. And that ch- after that, we got two more Spideys. Then we got FF. Mm-hmm. Then we got uh, Hulk. And um, there's some other 2000s ones Ooh. I'm missing, other than Iron Man and whatever the MCU ones that became of it. Um, I we got kick ass in 2010. Oh yeah, we're getting a sequel to that soon. We well, they did a sequel that was terrible. Oh, maybe that's but, what uh, I was thinking. Yeah, of. but uh, but I'd love to have to bring them bring them back in the comics. God, I love kick ass. Yeah, I mean, I I I even forgot why I brought us off on that tangent, but I'm glad they all know we love kick ass. Well, it's because uh, you were you were saying 90s superhero journey were in the 90s and FF. Oh, I was wondering what your superhero yes. journey was in the 90s. Yes, that's uh, all. I was trying to let the the listeners know who we are. It was Ultimate people. Spider-Man number one was the first comic I remember yeah. getting. That was at St. Mark's Comics. My dad boycotted that comic because he hated how Spider-Man was drawn, and I remember picking it up at a comic book fair, and I, I read it probably 50 times. And the, to this day, the only Spider-Man I've read front to back, oh, like yeah. the entire series. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can lose a month to that thing, man. It is perfect. I came close with Amazing, though. 
I think I read Amazing from the 60s into like the late 90s. That is dedication yeah. through the carnage stuff through the carnage stuff maximum carnage dude because it was like because it gets better because like the 60s are very 60s-esque and then yeah. it gets better in the 70s then the 80s amazing is fire 80s amazing what's so some good, good 80s amazing amazing stuff is i mean craven Cra- yeah, yeah. obviously but uh the gang war storyline oh the, yeah you were telling me about that Hob goblin, Hob like, goblin yeah, stuff the great. rose yeah. like what's the rose the one the fisk's son Oh, I didn't even know about yeah, that. Yeah, he's a cool villain. He's like, I gave you type 2 diabetes. You were just a boy. <laughs> I got to check. And Spider-Man stuff is so great because, like, it's so ridiculous. You can plop in and out. And even if it's, like, he's fighting a bunch of aliens who have aggravated chlamydia and he has to figure out how to teach them the hug so he doesn't blow up the galaxy, you put it down and you're like, that was fucking weird. But I'm glad I read that. Yeah, absolutely. I never regret reading Spider-Man stuff, even the Clone Saga. Oh, well, that's well. I'll, I'll differ with you on that. <laughs> when we read Spider-Man Life Story, we'll talk about how they made fun of that perfectly. Okay, I, I The do Clone like that. Saga. Uh, what, 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 are, what are they facing in the 90s? What's in the, the 90s, big foe? So Reed, Grunge. And, Reed and Tony have gotten their security system ready. They're like, okay. For Galactus. For Galactus. Uh, ben finds love when he meets Alicia, who's blind, and but she sees past, uh, she sees past the disfigure, uh, his disfiguring. Does she? Figurement. Well, Does well she, she? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she feels past it. Yeah, yeah, she does, and it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like... She loves him. Yeah, I mean, it adds to the heart of mm-hmm. Ben, you know, like... Yeah, well, Ben reconnects with his old love, uh, and she... Oh, yeah, she and, and she, she, well, no, no, she was like, why did you never call? And he's like, you could never love me like this, and she's like... I can't use the phone, bitch, I got yeah, rock fingers. Yeah. Like, she, like, she's like, I wouldn't have cared, but that's why it's so great that he can find Alicia. Where and does he find her? At a Stevie he, Wonder concert? I think he was out... I, no, it was, I think it was online dating. How does she do? Well, I guess in the yeah. '90s, it was like Match.com. Yeah, all right, <laughs> good for him. Good for they weren't meeting at a singles bar, right? Uh, and what are they? They're all reeling from Johnny. They're all reeling from Johnny, but they were happy that the security system is ready. But then Gal- at this point, though, by the way, I, we should mention only person who's seen him is Reed. Who uh, uh, Galactus? Yes, only only Reed right? Like him. it's crazy that Tony did this on a hunch, but Tony's a futurist, so right. he would do something like this. Oh, totally! I did, I, that they have a cool relationship. Me. Yeah, I'm I, so I always like the Reed and Tony relationship. He's so great, uh, man! Like, oh god. Anyway, what were you we yeah. saying? So then, someone comes to Earth and they think it's Galactus, and he completely destroys the entire security system like that. And it's not oh, Galactus; yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the Surfer. Surfer. And the Surfer goes to the UN, and he's like, "Hey." I've got like one one thousandth of Galactus's power, and I just wrecked your shit. Galactus is coming. And that's Norn, years. right? Norn Rad. That's or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Norn yeah, Rad, yeah, yeah. exactly. He goes, "You guys have ten years. Galactus is coming. You are all fucked." What do you, What do you think we would do if we heard something like that? There'd be people on Twitter being like, "This is all planned by." The uh, global elites, yeah, right, to get us to not be gay anymore, or to be gay. <laughs> I would uh, I would travel a lot would more. Have... I would certainly do that. I don't know. I'd be scared to travel because what if Galactus shows up and I die in a plane? But like... he said it was ten years, so we know That's that true. we have ten years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like when um the uh, the Viltrumites told uh, Invincible, he's like, "You have a hundred years to conquer a planet. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back, and I'm gonna get a better mustache." Um, the thing about Galactus or about Norn Rand, I I don't know if the book goes into. The show that I just watched from the '90s really goes into it, but like his him as a character is 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 beautiful. Fantastic oh, yeah. Four Two did a good job at that. Lawrence Fishburne yeah. killed it it's Lawrence Fishburne. with that when he saved Sue with the board, and and then he realizes, okay, killing's not the way. That to guy do doesn't it. have a bad performance in him. No, well, no, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. I can't think of one, honestly, man. He crushes. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was great. I can't believe he painted a body silver every day for that. Uh, <laughs> um, they get that warning with the system in place. Then, yes, what happens? So then they're just like, that's it. That That's the 90s. They're like, we got... We, we have 10 years left. We got 10 years. Uh, Franklin's kind of grown up. I think Franklin's married. gets married at this point. Was Franklin a mutant ever? Or did, with, Fra- did, Franklin's a mutant, yeah. He is a mutant. That was the whole thing. They so showed. he didn't get his powers from Sue and... Reed. Well, he, he... I mean, I think he I guess it probably bit, helped. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a mutant, but like... He was too powerful for everyone at Xavier's school, including G. Right. That's scary, mm-hmm. man. And he gets married in Wakanda. Yes, in this, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, God, it's so great. He got jungle fever. I got jungle fever. I'm Franklin Richards. My uncle died in the sun. Uh, and then 2000s happened, and they do nothing to stop 9 11. <laughs> It's true. They're at the Baxter building, and they're like, well, can't do shit about that. Yeah. Guess we'll just watch in case. No way a second plane's going to hit. 
And Spider-Man, it's like, oh, I got a history test, man. I deserve a day off. <laughs> and Avengers is just like, oh, that's we're paying a light bill right now, man. I can't do anything about this. What what did they have happen in the 2000s? Did Mole Man attack at any point in this book? I'm sure he attacked. He, was, I, I feel think, like he was first chapter. I think maybe. they show him in some like uh, kind yeah. of flashbacks. But 2000s is when Galactus actually comes. Right. And Reed is just like, you know what? I'm done trying to stop this guy. I'm just going to live my life. And he gets back together with Sue. And they're like enjoying their life. And Reed's like, my only regret is that I wasted so much time worrying about this Galactus guy. And I didn't cure my bonitis. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my only regret is that I have bonitis. Hey, bonitis. <laughs> 2000, like, he, go, he gets into uh, bird watching and shit. Yeah. He's just having a normal Manhattan quiet life. Mm -hmm. uh, helping fight the war on terror. Um, <laughs> I think he found Hussein himself. Yes. And he hid Bin Laden because he was like, I want to know how the fuck you did that shit, though. Reed um, works in mysterious ways. Reed works in the mysterious... He was half maker at this point. <laughs> he was making weapons of mass destruction. Um, and then uh, was... The, did anything of value happen? In yeah. Yeah, so two, that, that's, when, uh, that's when Galactus comes. Oh, right, right, right. And right, then... Right. Uh, and Surfer, Surfer comes. He goes, Galactus is coming, but he's got no, a deal. We see it, dude. <laughs> and he, he approaches Reed. He's like, here's the deal. He goes, if you become his new herald, you take my spot. He goes, and I can have sex with your wife. And I can <laughs> convey your wife. <laughs> Because obviously Reed is a cuck. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta do this thing for me, man. Been on this board a long time, no ass. You know how hard it is to fuck on a surfboard? I've killed three billion women. But uh, Surfer goes, okay, if you become the new Herald, like Galactus will spare the Earth, yeah. like what he did for my for my planet. And Reed goes, nah. But then Reed goes, all right, I'll do it. And so Reed goes into space oh, to yeah, tell Galactus he's gonna be the Herald. Galactus says to Surfer, hey, you've done well, takes away his powers, and flat out kills the Silver Surfer. And uh, Reed, Reed, Reed is about to become the new Herald of Galactus, and they have this psychic connection. Uh, but what he doesn't realize is that Franklin is in space with them. And Franklin yes. was given this kind of power emulator that enhances his powers, his uh, psionic powers. Mm -hmm. uh, he was given that by T'Challa. And so Franklin basically hits Galactus with a psionic blast and fries Galactus's brain. And the thing, who's also there, Ben comes in, punches Galactus in the face. They defeat Galactus, but as a result of this, because Reed, Reed was linked to Galactus when the psionic attack from Franklin happened, Reed's brain brain. is scrambled. Yeah, scrambled. That happened... Uh, this is going to sound tragic, but I promise it's funny. When my grandmother was dying... They were, they were like, we're just going to pull the plug because she's going to be in a vegetative state. My grandfather's like 85. He didn't understand this. Right. He comes out and he's like, yeah, we're going to have to pull the plug on Kit because they said otherwise she's going to be a vegetarian. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm like standing by my grandmother as you pass from this world to the next being like, I'll see you in the next VeggieTales episode. <laughs> Uh, and that the Reed stuff is kind of life without protein. I mean, is that even a life? Worth My living? grandfather got prostate cancer and he was like, that's because the food we eat sausage and bacon. Well, I ain't gonna stop now. I already got it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I get it. My mom smokes every day to this day because she swears that the reason my grandmother died was because she stopped smoking at 72. So yeah. like the two, the 2010s, is that the, this is the end for 2010s him? 2010s is doom. Yeah. Yes. Oh, because he's been on the on the thing with uh, what's the dude's name? Uh, the thinker. The thinker. Yeah. He's been making the. He's not the thinker, but he is the thinker. Yeah, and he's got a decoy thinker. Mm -hmm. That's the exactly thought. it. Yeah. yeah. And what's his thing? What's he in league this with? This is Doom hurting Doom? my head. This is my. This I is my can't head. Understand him. my head thinker. My head. <laughs> Bizarro. Uh, they're they're both planning on doing the dirty double cross on each other, uh -huh. right? That's how it always goes. Initially, right? yeah, but yeah. Doom, Doom is now the one calling the shots. Yeah, and he's created all these Doom bots designed by the Thinker because he made a deal with Claw in the past to get vibranium. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, and how do they take out Doom? So the way they take out Doom is the Thinker sees the error of his ways, and he knows that Reed knows some kind of shutdown code. To take, oh, out, uh, and to take out Doom, yeah. And so Reed actually puts some of his consciousness on an AI. And so Santini uh, makes it to Manhattan, finds Franklin. They find the Reed AI. They give them the code that shuts down the Doom bots. Doom is defeated. And that's when Reed gives his final message to his family. Yeah, and it's not a sad ending either. Like, it's not like them saying goodbye. It's just more or less like, this is the tax of having family that's loved you for all these years. Mm -hmm is the hurt it takes when it's time to say goodbye to them. And also, he he went out a hero. He went out a hero. 
and he says goodbye to Franklin. He says goodbye to Sue. But I think the last person he says goodbye to is Ben. Because he's like, you had no business being this good of a friend to me, but you stood by me, and I ruined your life. You are the best, Ben. Oh, man. That's more of like... It, it doesn't man, even you're going to make me cry. I know, man. Like I'm, I was honestly thinking about you, and I was, I was thinking, thinking about... I was thinking about you! It, it, it speaks more of a testament to Ben's humanity, and also... They they put up they were in this together mm-hmm. through the end even when they were broken apart they were together mm-hmm. man and it, I know this is like a, a breeze over every kind of cool story over the last few years but like you get into some of these deep Fantastic Four issues and especially the one that's out right now you feel that family that's why I was tearing up man like you feel that familyness. That doesn't really exist in any of the superhero team there. And it's not really appreciated either because they're they're sort of the conduit for the plot, right? Yeah. Like Spider-Man has a black suit and he needs to figure it out. How do you do that? Oh, go to the smartest man on the planet. Not realizing the connection he has with Reed, mm-hmm. the, the Fantastic Four honorary membership he yeah. sort of holds. Nobody really has that with the X-Men. You can kind of, if you're not a mutant, at least, mm-hmm. uh, you're not really going to be able to show up to the front gates and be like, hey, I'm with the Avengers. We need your help. They're going to be like, this could be a trap. Mm-hmm. Um, the Avengers. It's a what? It's a, it's a trap. It's a trap. It's a crap. <laughs> um, the, the, they did, I don't understand the criticism of this because, in my opinion, Fantastic Four is, I hate to sound like George Lucas, it's about family, but it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the one thing I will say, not enough Herbie. I want a more Herbie in this one. Oh, yeah. Who I think will be Jack Quaid. I think <laughs> I like that's that. who will voice him. Um, but I, my my final thoughts on it are just we need... This will bring... I, I hate to say bring Marvel back because I, I don't think Marvel fell off. I think it went through a period that it always does. It's not always mm-hmm. Avengers and X-Men. Sometimes it's Eternals. Sometimes it's Luke Cage. It's a whole universe. This will bring people back to the mainstream the way Iron Man yes. was. Because uh, it's I, not yeah. the star, it's the character. But Pedro Pascal is a star, and he's going to be bringing that with the character. It's, it's all about quality control. Yes. It was, it was, I mean, I think this was more Bob Iger and Bob Chapek saying, hey, yeah. Marvel works, so let's just keep putting out content and content. And Marvel's secret sauce is Kevin Feige. Yeah. Because Kevin Feige, at the end of the day, is a nerd. He truly understands these characters. He became, Kevin Feige became a thing because on the original X-Men in 2000, that is, he was the associate producer and he was a comic nerd and he knew so much about what was going on. So they were just turning to him and they're like, is this accurate? Is this correct? That is my dream job for us is Mm -hmm. we do this long enough. We finish the Batfam movie and then they go, you guys want to write an eight issue series of whatever Green Lantern gets his first queef? Boom, let's do it. Like, that's that's the dream goal. And Dude, yeah. I mean, the Kevin Smith comics that he's written, Gar- uh, Guardian Devil, Batman Cacophony. I yeah. mean, Kevin Smith created the villain Onomatopoeia. I didn't even know that was a villain. Yeah, he was a cool villain, actually. Played by Christopher Walken. Yeah. Pow, ow. Pow, pow. <laughs> I saw a spoon fall down the stairs. It went rinky tink tink, clank, clank, clank. Boom. This mouse is in milk. It's drowning. <laughs> well, I said one uh, comes up. It's a cream bucket yeah. of cream. Yeah, one mouse drowns. The other, he he, he, he churns, travels so hard. He churns that milk into butter. To the top. Which mouse am I? And then he comes home, and his wife has sex with another man. Hey, that and that. You know who that mouse was? It was Reed Richards. <laughs> it was Reed Richards. It was actually Namor having <laughs> sex with another man's wife. Uh, all in all. Do you have any Fantastic Four stories you would recommend? I, I, well, that's what I was saying. Like, I don't, like, I I never think of Fantastic Four, like, trade paperback stories yeah. that come to mind. This, this really, I thought, really captured them so well. Because, yeah, I mean, I love the Fantastic Four in other big Marvel stories. Yes. I love Reed in Civil War. I love, like, uh, I think what you said about Ultimatum. That's a very cool one. But this is, like, such a great, pure Fantastic Four story. I agree. And, honestly, if you... We, we try to pick books that are on the Marvel Unlimited app or the DC Infinite. This is a, the Marvel Unlimited app has a great reading guide f- dating back to issue one in the 60s to now. And like you said, 
Fantastic Four is so great because people move through them. They're they're team up, you know, yeah. like they'll be here, they'll be there, and then you don't really Wood could be the really uh, Reed could be really wooden, or he could be the guy that pressed a button that that sent a bunch of kids to Mars for a year, you know, like <laughs> and 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 there's the family there that is the first ones to condemn him, and then they jump in the front lines when the government's like, we have to nuke the Baxter Building, um, and <laughs> nostalgia wise. I love them because I remember vividly going to see those two movies in theaters in, in the 2000s, and they hold up. They are, they are just as good as they were back then. Not enough fight scenes, and I do agree with your approach to Doom. Um, but all in all... Uh, my checklist was a great thing. Oh, my... And it was makeup, too. That, like, he apparently regretted day two. <laughs> being like, why did I do this? Because <laughs> that was painful, having all those goddamn rocks on. Um, but all in all, I have a soft spot in my heart for FF, I think more or less because of the kids, mm -hmm. because of Franklin and Valeria, who has a fucked up relationship with Doom, which I love. Oh, yeah. That's the bi that's his biggest fuck you to Reed Richards. <laughs> Something about the kids of established Marvel characters become so powerful. Like, Franklin mm -hmm. is insanely powerful. Cable is insanely powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nepo babies. Nepo babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Do uh, you have any final thoughts? Uh, FF thoughts? Just uh, Mary fuck kill. Oh, uh, Reed, fuck thing Sue. and Johnny. Fuck Sue. Uh, oh, read, read, read thing and Johnny. Johnny. I knew, of course. Uh, of course. I'm not gonna uh, make it easy for no, you. No, I'm not gonna marry Sue though. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna marry Ben. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna fuck Johnny. I'm gonna kill Reed. Yeah. <laughs> We're always on motherfucking par with our goddamn ranking, brother. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Uh, yeah, that would be my par my parting thoughts, too. I will say I have great confidence in the Fantastic Four 2025 or mm -hmm. whenever and it inevitably Agreed. gets delayed to 2026, um, which it won't now because Superman comes out that day and Kevin Feige put Fantastic Four out the same day as Superman. Oh. That's not gonna happen. And the, yeah, it, I mean, like it's it. Yeah. Well, no, he, he Kevin Feige did it. They're oh, going really? out. The, that's the date they changed it to. Oh my James god! James Gunn moved the date for Superman. and Kevin Feige moved the date for Fantastic Four. He doesn't forget. I don't know why he does. Why he has to do that? Like James Gunn did nothing to him. You guys did something to James yeah. Gunn. Also, Gunn made three. Well, two amazing movies, and the second one was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah. I liked Guardians too. It's I don't fun. know what's wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fun. I didn't, uh, Kurt Russell having long hair again was great for me in that <laughs> 70s montage. I didn't like the... It hurt me to put that little tumor in her head. Every one of those movies, they have to have one scene where Chris Brown... Uh, Chris Brown... Chris Pratt has an emotional <laughs> breakdown. Mm -hmm. And in three, he nailed it. I cried when, Ra when Rocket was losing oh. it and he was losing it. Dude. I was in Boston and I was crying. People call me a freaking queer. How about... <laughs> <laughs> Wicked queer. Wicked queer. <laughs> Fucking tear me inside. How about when too. he sees his, his his grandpa again? And his yes. grandpa is getting yeah. so choked up. And it's, he was like, can you pardon me for storming the Capitol? <laughs> I heard you took out that purple dude who looks like Keenan Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> if you have fatigue, and this is something I'm going to point out every episode. If you are tired of watching or you're tired of rewatching, please do yourself a favor. There are more comic book shops on the planet than you think there are. There might not be one close to you, but there's one close enough. And I fell in love with superheroes again through comic books. And I have a, I'm, I'm excited for Fantastic Four movie because of this book. If you are listening to this, uh, we're doing Attack on Titan next week. I realize some of you may not have seen Attack on Titan. You have a week to watch it. If not, you're still going to love the episode because it's yeah. great, and it's us, and we're easy to look to at. To my weebs out there, we love anime and manga. This is just the beginning. Brent got me onto this when we started the episode. Uh, anything Brent's ever told me to watch, I've watched because he's never led me wrong. I watched Attack on Titan, and I just finished my second time watching it, and I read the manga. Uh, and um, I, 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 you guys are going to love this episode because there's going to be some intense. Uh, that's going to be a long, fun, tense, passionate one. Because I talked to you the whole time oh, I was yeah. watching it. And we had long Remember conversations. Remember those first four seasons of Game of Thrones that were amazing, and then yes. it became diarrhea. Yeah. Just imagine a show that doesn't become diarrhea until the very, 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 very until the last ten minutes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't want it with some other guy. <laughs> I'm smart. I'm smart. Uh, as always, it was a pleasure getting to talk with you, true believers. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you heard us say anything on this, you have any Fantastic Four recommendations, email us, secretidentitypod at gmail.com, as well as our Instagram, at secretidentitypod, and we're up there on Twitter as well. Uh, any uh, comments for you? Please just keep... At Brent Birnbaum. At, oh, yeah, at Brent Birnbaum on Instagram. Please just keep recommending comics to us. We love your comments. We lo I, I just read Mr. Miracle because of all the people that commented on it. 
This was such a good read. Please continue with the recommendations. Someone recommended uh, Cavalier and Clay, which is based off uh, J- uh, Joe Simon. That Simon's sounds very Jeffrey. gay. <laughs> I'm well, going to read, I'm gonna re- I'm well, gonna read like that soon. Uh, th- no, yeah, we really have been. Like, between, shout out to our producer, Will Diamond, who mm-hmm. creates every single episode for us. We He goes through the comments and finds the, the beautiful ones and the shitty ones and doubly sends those ones to us. <laughs> um, but, like, we're reading them, and uh, we are loving the feedback. Please continue to tell me I was wrong for saying X-Men 97 stole Whitney Houston's song because I didn't realize that came out after the show. Oh, Whatever, uh, it was similar. How about how about all the people that called us out for saying that Batman could never do what Superman did when he talked the kid off the ledge? Oh, my God, you... And, and the example they used not gonna was, get mad at them. was Ace in, in, long, in, in uh... I know another we, clip that we, we, we made! We did an entire clip on Ace! Listen. And you know what happened to Ace? Ace died. Batman didn't save her. No, he held her hand and said, yeah. I can do this. I have nothing going on for 10 <laughs> minutes. And in our clip, we talked about how great of a hero is because for us, Batman is the GOAT. We love Batman more than anyone except for maybe Spider-Man. Batman is a way cooler hero than Superman. I love but- Batman more than Spider-Man. I'll yeah. say, and he's cooler than I Super I, I like. I personally like Spidey more, but Batman's my clear number two. He couldn't have done what Superman did there. No, absolutely not. He would have been like, do a flip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, uh, what, you're feeling down? My parents died. (laughs) They died and I got a billion dollars. I don't know if I mentioned this. They also put me in charge with this old dude. I don't know why. He was like, oh, I guess my last day of work. And then he read the will and said, fuck. And shout out to our true believers. And um, we got to think of it. What's a nerd exit line? Uh, We say Excelsior to start. Uh, Imperial troops have entered the base. Imperial troops have entered the...